Good afternoon. Uh, this is the last but one uh, session for this week on this track. Um, I hope we're all going to see you all again uh, next week. So uh, this session is session 3A Q when you do the, your feedback. Okay. And your presenter is Taylor Donna from IBM. The session is Creating Unity between your APM application owners and Z SMEs in a truly hybrid world. Um, so questions, you may raise your questions in the chat, uh, but Taylor prefers to take them at the end. Um, so, you know, just put them in there and we'll uh, get to them at the end of the session. And, um, at the end of the session as well, I will allow you to unmute yourselves so that you can um, talk. The session is being recorded um, and uh, should be available for playback in uh, a, a few couple of weeks or so. Okay, um, we are also supporting two charities this year. I'm sure you've heard this before, but I'm gonna say it again. Um, it's the uh, lifeboats um, doing very uh, important work around the coastline of, of Britain and the guide dog for the blind, um, two very worthy charities. And if you do donate, uh, you'll get a raffle ticket or two, depending on how much you donate, um, for entry into the GSE raffle. Uh, they look to be pretty good um, prizes, so good luck with that. Uh, and also think of your donation as uh, a bit of an appreciation for the time and effort that your session leaders have uh, put in to making this uh, um, presentation for you. Okay, so I'll now just pass over to Taylor to take you through this session. Thanks, Anna, and thanks, thanks for joining us, joining me, folks. Um, I'm Taylor Donner, and I'm a product manager on ZAPM Connect at IBM. And uh, we do have some work going around the house, so if you do hear a, a dog barking or something like that, don't fret. It's just our retired racing greyhound. Um, anyways, uh, if you were here on Tuesday, this presentation is somewhat similar, but we're going to be going into a little bit more detail um, regarding what the, the SME and the Z, Z application owner looks like. So let's start off with an example. Uh, I know something that we've all gotten much more familiar with during this past couple of years, this ongoing pandem pandemic is food delivery. It's ordered. And I actually have a good friend that works for one of these companies. It's, it's not Uber Eats like you see here in the photo, but they had a scenario in which he was telling me about where they had an outage early on a Friday night, which happens to be the most popular and busiest night of the week for these services. And with outages means total chaos. So code red scenario, because not only were frustrated customers uninstalling the application, but there is a whole network of services that gets tied into these food delivery services, both with the customer, but also with the drivers and the ones that are hired to pick up the orders. And in this instance, the outage was so bad that the drivers were en route to drop off things and they were no longer able to access the addresses of where they were going. Completely stranded, but also the merchants as well. A uh, bunch of folks in these services, and especially during the pandemic when dining was limited, um, this was how a huge, how a, uh, a lot of businesses were able to stay afloat. And many of them were unable to accept orders, unable to fulfill orders that they knew they had just received. And so this is just one outage on, you know, the, uh, the worst day of the week that it could really be impacted more than just customers, but a whole network of partners that were currently working with this platform. And when they were doing their post-mortem on it, they expected financially that they were losing about $250,000 an hour but what they couldn't put a figure on is how much of their brand's credibility and brand loyalty took a hit because of this outage on, on it at such a critical time. So in many circumstances, we can all relate. We've 
we've all been on probably at least one end of an outage of a digital service. And obviously it can be quite expensive for the business, frustrating for the cu customer, and tends to happen at the most inopportune time. And this is just one example, but it's not always these worst case scenarios that creep up and cause us a lot of pain. One study actually found that even just a 1% increase in application, application latency or a one second slowdown actually reduced customer conversion by 7% and satisfaction by 16%. So the horror stories that make the problem real are one thing. Almost every customer that I work with on my day-to-day -day reports that they're not just worried about avoiding the catastrophic, they're absolutely charged with optimizing every second of the day to ensure that their experience can remain competitive with what consumers are, acting, are interacting with. And that's the pressure coming from the external. The internal is also problematic as well. In the past, applications that folks were responsible for were, were very straightforward. It was a web layer calling some middleware to single backends, but now because customers are adopting DevOps and there's intense pressure to modernize applications so they can remain competitive, there's been an adoption of microservice architectures that are adding layers and layers of com complexity that can be struggled to monitor and keep up with. And most often teams, application teams, are having to keep up with all of these insane demands with even fewer resources and less budget. So like I said, I hear from customers regularly and they have a ton on their plate. And the internal and external stressors are really contributing to all of this. So now that we've seen what's really evolution of a specific so solution to these problems, um, and we broadly call this category of software an APM or an application performance monitor or application performance management tool. And there's a whole host of vendors that play in this space. So this of course is not comprehensive, but these should be some names that you're familiar with. And they're all really charged with helping to address those market drivers that we just talked about. There's AppDynamics and Instana, which IBM uh, or ZAPM Connect has integrations with and Splunk and Dynatrace and quite a few others like Elastic. And we need to make it possible for the teams, IT teams to understand all of the resources that are part of a given application. If something's not performing as expected, but we also need to be day-to-day -day providing them opportunities to improve the performance or identity optimization points in their user patterns or user behaviors by constantly monitoring the traffic and the health of an application. So I wanted to spend a little time introducing how APMs work because I know that can be a new topic for someone, especially if you're on the Z side. Um, and there aren't really any APM solutions that touch of much what touch much of what happens on Z. So there, there are three steps I'd say to an APM tool. The first one is really mapping. Being able to visualize your entire application in a single pane of glass is one of the most critical pieces of creating a, a unified troubleshooting strategy. For a long time, uh, and for many customers that I still, still speak with today, in all of these different siloed teams, maybe one maintains the database, one maintains the network, one maintains the cloud presence, one maintains Z, and they all have a really hard time of being able to stitch together how all of their pieces interface together for a given application. And that's so important because if you're a large organization and you've got maybe 10 critical business services and just one of them is having a problem, it becomes a major effort on behalf of all of those siloed teams to try and understand, um, okay, which exactly, of my, which exactly of my resources is involved in that given business service or business application. And the awesome thing about APM tools is when it does come to mapping, a lot of them do it in a, in a way that's very automated, very easy and straightforward. So you typically apply one or a few agents to the resources that you're trying to monitor and it stitches everything together. So pretty much just, just starts listening and creates a view of what's happening without you having to go in and manually define every transaction or business path. And this is also great for DevOps as well because you're constantly updating your applications, making changes and the topology view the topology view is constantly being monitored as well. So it just 
just pretty much starts listening and creates a view of what's happening with you uh, and what's going on within your hybrid cloud applications, as well as your, your Z applications in the case of ZAPM Connect. So throughout this presentation, uh, I got a couple screenshots for you, a few different vendors, so you can kind of get a feel of what these things look like, um, not just in one platform, but across all the different implementations. So this is a topology view that you would see in Elastic. Uh, and this is, like I said, speaking to the idea that you've got all these different services here, uh, and you can kind of get a feel for how they're all interacting with one another. You have your, your Postgres, your Python, Java, um, views all, all interacting with, uh, with one another. And this is in Stana. Uh, so you have similar view where you can see this overall high level, high level view of the different services and architecture, like the shop to shop front end product search ratings. And then you can drill in further to see different components that make up those services. So moving on, you've got, you've got a view of everything that's happening now. So let's, let's go back to baseline, meaning let's understand what's normal and then we can easily alert or even before we reach the deviation from normal, that is noticeable to customers um, on early deviations. A lot of tools have machine learning models, um, machine learning engines that take a look at all the data that's being collected on every transaction at one minute or a one second interval and start to, uh, start to map the patterns that are present there in order to create these early alerts. So this is an app dynamics view. So we're seeing this to topology, but also on the right hand side, they do a really nice, nice job of being able to kind of um, describe what's what's healthy, what is standard and expected. And like the transaction scorecard you see on the right hand side, um, because they're listening all the time to what the transaction health is, they can call out something when it's way slower than normal or very slow, or even when something's ending, uh, ending up in an error. And this is another drill down from an app, app dynamic screen as well, where you can see literally, they'll create an expected baseline of low to response time or the important metrics that indicate health and help you, the manager, the, uh, the team understand when things are, uh, are above or, or below that base. And then finally, of course, the, the natural next step, once you understand your application and you can know when a problem is happening, um, you actually get to go one step further and diagnose that problem um, specifically. So in a lot of APMs, when anomaly is detected, say a response time is dramatically increased, they'll uh, start capturing even more information. And, um, and that allows customers and users to go in and quickly diagnose like, okay, it looks like uh, this line of code is the problem or here are the logs associated, associated with, the, with the slowdown we've captured. And I think this is uh, again in Instana, you can see there's traces that have been kicked off uh, because the slowdown was detected and there's a lot of detail that someone can go in and, and trouble troubleshoot with. I believe this is Datadog. Um, this is an example of a platform that goes into the exact line of code uh, of a class that is associated with the transaction that was ending in an error. So this means a whole heck of a lot of, when it comes to getting fixes out in the wild really quickly. Um, Getting that line of code allows you to go in and, and make make a quick fix on a on a really easy uh, in a really easy manner because everything's right there for you. However, we we do see that these APM solutions are great, especially for cloud application owners. They make a huge difference for the customers that are navigating those problems that we articulated at the beginning. But you know, this session is all about how we create unity be it between our APM users and Z teams. And unfortunately, one of the most pervasive problems in the APM space is um, lack of visibility for IBM Z. And it's roughly about 13 of the 15 market leading APMs that Gartner calls out in their quadrant 
they, uh, they lack any support whatsoever for IBM Z. So even though businesses may have invested millions, sometimes thousands of dollars to instrument their entire app application with APM tools, they may, may be missing a really critical piece of the puzzle, especially when there's a lot of moving parts outside of the, uh, outside of the hybrid cloud application infrastructure. And here's another, here's an example of what it could look like. Again, this is, this is AppD, an application and inventory app that's being monitored. You can see, you know, the, the, the baseline is happening. Errors are being identified. And, but if this is the case that errors are coming from IBM Z, we've got a really big problem because there's very little visibility into the mainframe from app dynamics itself. So we see all of these different regions and nodes from, from, um, from Java and web service backends and Oracle. But when we look at this Kix region, there's really no information that's, that's presented here. So, you know, there's there's a there's a lot of finger pointing and and more room discussions, which I'll uh, discuss in a second. So, you know, this is a very similar story for our customers who are using Instana as their APM. Uh, you can see this in Instana. This is an Instana topology view that critical application is instrumented with their distributed applications. So that cloud technologies, networks, databases, and more will will. Uh, will be surfaced. And unfortunately, transactions that are calling out to the mainframe enter a black box with no additional detail as highlighted by this, this red circle. The application owner or the user of the APM can't troubleshoot beyond, hey, it's a mainframe problem, which can be quite a significant gap with, for customers with significant Z, uh, Z workloads. And so what that looks like is kind of a very specific pattern. And when it comes down to monitoring a, a modern hybrid cloud application, there's a number of folks involved. On the distributed side, we have the IT ops practitioner persona. Um, these folks are responsible for the overall health of an application. They're commonly using an application performance monitoring type tool to, to manage all of the interrelated bits and pieces that must work together to keep the service up and running. And um, these individuals often have very, very little Z awareness or understanding. And for the sake of our example, they could be using AppD or excuse me, App Dynamics or, or Instana as their APM tool. And on the mainframe side, we have Jim, the, uh, the Z subject matter expert. They're responsible, he's responsible for the health of the mainframe infrastructure and often specializes in certain key subsystems like IMS, or Kicks. Um, Oh, one thing I do want to note here um, is I'm showing an Omegamon screen for Jim, but there's no dependency on Omegamon for ZAPM Connect. Um, uh, we recognize customers use a variety of monitoring tools for their system, and we, we made a conscious decision not to have any prerequisite tools so the so solution can be easily adopted by as many customers as possible. Um, so you see these, these personas use quite different tooling beyond just their tools. Um, these individuals tend to have drastically different skill sets. And in large, large organizations, they may be located on opposite sides of the country or even the globe. And quite often when I'm facilitating a discussion about CAPM and bringing these personas together, it, uh, it may be the first time that they've ever met. Um, so our, our goal with ZAPM is not to help Mickey do Jim's job or Jim do Mickey's job. We want to enable the two very different personas uh, to work better together to deliver a smoother experience for, for their customers. So this is actually a client example that I had a discussion with a few years ago. They had spent, I think, um, 10 million uh, in instrumenting their entire set of applications across seven different data centers, basically every country. Uh, and they expected that this APM tool was going to solve all their problems. There would be no more outages. Uh, they, there would be no outages, or if there were outages, they would be addressed before they hit a customer and they saw a similar view like we just looked at 
uh, where there were calls going off to the mainframe and those mainframe calls appear to be responding slower than normal. But, um, but because you know the, uh, the APM didn't go into any more detail about what was happening on Z, the IT operations team using the APM tool just kind of had to guess. And so their instructed rules, like let's go to whatever mainframe team was responsible for the problem previously. So in this case, um, it looks like our APM is predicting a slowdown coming from Z, but I can't see any detail. I guess I'll bug the MQ team since they had the problem last time. And, you know, it creates all this finger pointing war room nightmare where APM users will go to one SME and say, hey, um, there's something wrong with the mainframe. Is it MQ? And the MQ team will have to be like, no, it's not us. It's, it's not my problem today. And they'll push it over to the IMS team and says, IMS looks idle. Are you sure this application is even calling IMS? And then, you know, then it'll get back to the Kix SME and it's like, uh oh, looks like Kix is experiencing a major, major slowdown. So, you know, they typically hand it off to from SME to SME. And, um, you know, and they say, uh, all this time, customers are impacted. Maybe it's not a full on outage, but there could be a potential significant slowdown. And therefore the business is unhappy because they just spent all this money on APM tools and they're still having their war room scenarios where they're trying to figure out where the problem lies. And of course, the, uh, the other Z teams are frustrated because people were coming at them, pointing fingers saying, hey, this is your fault when really it's not creating chaos and a lot of dysfunction across the organization. So really the point of the conversation is today, today is, is we're, we're trying to further the mission of creating unity in these APM tools that made such a difference in the lives of customers that implement them correctly from end to end. And really what we found is that the, the most valuable thing that you can do in improving the relationship between the application team or the rest of the house and your Z teams is getting everyone on the same side of information in a single pane of glass that can see all of the components involved in the application, including the Z resources, because then there's, uh, there's no longer any, you know, throwing it over the wall because everyone, everybody can, can work from the same, same set of information. So again, let's, uh, let's jump back to examples. So as shown before, this is Instana. You can see there's a ton of different services involved here, but you can see without ZAPM Connect, the IBM solution for getting Z visibility in your APM solution, there's really no visibility into a call once it enters the mainframe. So, we end up being pretty stuck here. However, um, this, this kind of helps you understand how that view can rapidly expand once you've implemented a tool that enables uh, this Z visibility into your APM. Again, we have, uh, we have Instana here and no longer do we have that same black box. Um, we've got additional layers of visibility into Kix and DB2. Uh, VSAM, MQ, um, which I don't actually don't think is, is represented here. Um, but instead just having one note represents this whole critical mass of, um, you know, system of record technology. There's a lot more that the teams can, can work from and, uh, and understand uh, as part of a given application is if something's going wrong. So. This, uh, this, this extra layer of visibility makes it a lot easier for the cloud application owner who has no experience with Z whatsoever to say, hey, there's a problem going here. There's a problem going on in this Kix region. It looks like it's, it's this specific event. Um, here's the transaction ID. Here's the ABIN code, et cetera. They're able to contact the right ZSME because they have all this information and the solution um, quickly quickly arrives because um, you know it's it's better visibility and transparency into um, what's going on. And so that we see that 
app interaction is much more smooth. The APM user, rather than just having to guess around, um, they can pretty much go to the Kix SME. Um, so it seems there's a slowdown coming from Kix. It appears to be stemming from Kix region name, task ID. And here's a link if you'd like to see it for yourself. The Kix SME says, thanks for the heads up. I'm going to navigate to that Kix region in Omega Mon, review the Kix task history, and take action immediately. And uh, you know everybody's operating from a from a unified set of information and data that they can work to solve the problem together, instead of that very painful and awkward throwing the wall, throwing it over the wall experience that uh, that so many customers still seem to still seem to encounter. And so I know this was a this was just a brief introduction to the whole topic of APMs and integrating Z into your APM solutions, but I wanted to give you some kind of like like uh, next steps that I'd encourage as like an advocate for improved unity across your applications. So you could use this today after after this webinar. So first and foremost, definitely make sure you understand your company's APM strategy. I think it's like 70% plus of enterprise customers have more than one APM tool. So if maybe your area is using New Relic, ask around, see if other business units are using Astana or, or Dynatrace or AppDynamics and, and see if there's any effort to consolidate across one APM tool and the, uh, and the whole business. So those are constantly being pushed and it's important to know if you all are, um, going to be locked into one APM tool. So once you kind of kind of have a feel for what the APM landscape is at your organization, um, try to understand if Z visibility is even possible with the vendors that you're that you're using. So IBM, like I said, we've got a we've got a pro product called Z APM Connect, uh, formerly Z Application Performance Management Connect, but IBM loves their acronym. So of course we had to uh, truncate it. Um, into ZAPM, but it helps get Z data into market leading APM tools. And currently we do support AppDynamics and, and Instana, two screenshots, uh, multiple screenshots that I showed you throughout the presentation. And like I mentioned, there are a few other vendors out there that have some, some Z support, but I would highly recommend you buckle down and see if the visibility is possible with your, uh, your vendor today. And uh, if it's not, I'd encourage uh, looking at the options where it is possible because it makes a heck of a difference to be able to have that unified view. And if you get the feedback from non-Z teams that say, hey, uh, you know, it's not really that important to us that the Z team be represented in our APM solution, I just encourage you to kind of go through the exercise of documenting what happens when an outage does occur. Um, we actually call it journey mapping and, and user research. And that's really about what effects there are to, to a problem, what steps happen when a problem occurs and, and how you are able to resolve it. And, um, and that leads the way to being able to identify opportunities for expediting and improving the way the, the problem or mediation is, is currently done. And of course, if you have questions, you know, this was a uh, very brief introduction to the to topic. Feel free to throw them in the chat or, or we can discuss further. But um, before I answer any questions, I do wanna make a plug uh, for, for an upcoming presentation on uh, next, next Tuesday. So uh, as I'm sure most of you all are aware, if you, if you are on this, this GSE track um, that IBM uh, acquired a, a, an APM in Stana in the spring and earlier this September, we released a, um, a new offering called Instana on ZOS, which is sort of a pre-packaged pre uh, version of Instana with all of the, um, all of the Z agents that we current, so currently support um, pre-packaged with it. Um, so you should definitely check that out. This is an awesome presentation. Um, this might be the first time it's been given publicly. So, you know, definitely check that out because there's a really cool opportunity to uh, um, get some get some better idea of what's going on in your in your mainframe um, with a pretty easy easy install. Um, 
with Instana. So that's uh, that's three AW next Tuesday. Um, contact information is at the bottom, but um, yeah, please make sure you submit your uh, your feedback, and I appreciate your time. Let's see. Okay, so there were no questions in the chat, but I will now uh, uh, set up to uh, you can unmute yourself. I just need to find the right button for that. Okay, so you are available. You are able to unmute yourself if you want to ask any questions directly. Um, as Taylor said, uh, please do your feedback. We do look at it, honestly. Uh, one of the questions about the length of the presentation, please uh, read it carefully. Uh, nine is not the correct answer, that's much too long. Uh, five is the uh, optimum response. Um, and uh, uh, please do uh, remember to give generously and show your appreciation for the session. And here's mine. Uh, so please do um, uh, do that. I don't know, uh, Taylor, I forgot to ask you if your slides are preloaded onto the website. I haven't loaded them onto the, the, onto the website, but I, I, I can right after this. Yeah, that will allow people to, to download them. Uh, the recording of the session won't be available for a few weeks, so uh, that's... Uh, uh, your starter. <laughs> okay. Okay, so nobody seems to be unmuting themselves or putting any questions in the chat. So uh, it just remains for me to, to say thank you very much for attending and uh, um, see you shortly at the next session or next week. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining folks. Appreciate it. Ending the session now.